It can easily happen that you end up having hundreds of layers within a single Photoshop document, and depending on the pixel dimensions, the file size can also reach several gigabytes. In this video, I will cover several ways you can work effectively with large Photoshop files using less known features and keyboard shortcuts. To go through all the techniques I want to show you in this video, I'm going to use this amazing artwork by Patrick Brown. He is one of my favorite digital artists, and he also has a Patreon page, for which the link is in the description below. Here he is sharing the fan art he creates with his supporters, and you can download actually the fully layered Photoshop files. And the reason why I chose this example for this video, because in this file he has hundreds of layers, and this is a huge file. So so if you zoom close, you can see the actual resolution. And then once again, if I zoom back, you can see that clearly he's a big fan of computer games and he's been working for years on this piece. So in his free time, he kept drawing each of these characters and then put them all together in one composition. So if you're also a fan of computer games like myself, you probably will have fun spotting some of your favorite characters in this piece. Why we cover a couple of cool Photoshop techniques. So first and foremost, one of the coolest thing that was introduced in Photoshop 2020 has to be the zoom to layer option. This is extremely useful, especially when you work with these large documents and huge canvases, because if you find a layer, let's just say in this case, I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to control or command click on one of these characters. Let's just pick Geralt here in the swimming pool from Witcher. So I clicked on the layer, but if I want to quickly zoom onto that layer, I can now use the layer's thumbnail and just hold down the option or alt key while clicking on it to quickly zoom onto it. And this is going to fill the screen with the contents of that selected layer. Now with this, we don't even have to zoom in and out, just simply find the layer that we are looking for. Let's say we want to see where Scorpion is in this composition. I can just again hold down alt or option key click on the thumbnail and we immediately zoom there. Now there's another way to access the same feature by just picking a layer. In this case, I selected Joker and then going through the view menu and choose fit layer or layers on screen. And there you go. Again, we zoomed onto the contents of that layer. Now, the reason I would use the menu over the shortcut is if there's multiple layers I would like to fill the screen with. In that case, just select all the layers and then choose the option I just showed you from the menus. Before this feature was introduced, I found another similar method of identifying where a layer is within a composition. And that is if we are zoomed out and I select a layer, let's just say this one here, I can control or command click on the thumbnail and that was available in previous versions of Photoshop as well. And Sometimes it's easy to spot where the selection appears. So the little marching ants usually are quite noticeable, but in case you don't see it, you can also just press Q on the keyboard, which is going to cover up everything with this red overlay apart from the selection, which is the layer itself. If you use this feature, just remember to exit the quick mask because you don't want to get stuck in it and then control or command D to get rid of the selection. The other really cool improvement in Photoshop 2020 was the convert to layers option for smart objects. Now I love to work with smart objects, but sometimes it can be tricky to turn a smart object back into individual layers. So in this case, for example, we have a layer group here called Fallout 4. So all of those characters there in the center are from that game. And we can see that there's a couple of layers here for that part of the artwork. And if I want, I can turn this into a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object, and now I can move it around. But more importantly, if I were to resize these layers, and then later on, I decide I want to move them back into the original size, I won't lose any pixel detail. Not to mention that I can also start using filters and adjustments non-destructively directly on this layer. Now, once you create a smart object, the only difficulty is that you have to double click on the layer's thumbnail to access the contents of that layer. 
But while you are inside the smart object and you have access to the individual layers, you don't actually see it in the original context of the full document. So it can be a little tricky and slowing down the workflow to go back and forth between the source of the smart object and your main composition. So in some cases, if you change your mind and you want to extract the contents of the smart object or reverse it back into normal layers, you can just right click now and choose convert to layers. So that is a brilliant option because then you get everything back in the main composition on separate layers exactly where they were. And sometimes when you have hundreds of layers within the same document, it might be worth trying out using the isolate feature, which can help you to really focus on only those layers that you are currently working with. So let's just say we are working on details on Sonic. And in that case, if I select that layer group, I can just right click on the character here in the document window and then choose isolate layers. And that's going to show only what's inside that layer group. So I can very quickly check all of the layers. And when I'm done with my changes, I can just turn off the isolation here on the top right corner. It is a bit similar to how Illustrator works, where you can just simply double click on an object or a group to enter the isolation and then double click somewhere else to exit it. Now, if you like to work in an organized way and you actually take your time naming your layers, you should probably also try out the search or filter layers by their name. So this is something you can find here on the top. You just have to make sure you turn on the isolation option and then switch to name and just simply type in the name of the layer you are looking for. Let's say I wanted to find Mario. If I just type his name in, there he is. And once again, I can use Alt or Option key to click on the thumbnail and zoom onto the layer. Now, if you forget to name your layers, and there's a lot of layers you have to go through naming at the end of your workflow, you can also use another useful shortcut. When you rename the layer, just press Tab to go to the next layer. And then I'm just going to type in something here. And then Tab again goes to the next layer. Tab, Tab, Tab. You can go through it. And Shift Tab would go backwards. So if you start naming layers from below, you can also go through without using the mouse, just simply switching quickly between layers and naming them. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now it can often happen that in a large document like this, you end up having a few unnecessary layers. And usually these are either hidden or they just have nothing on them. So one of the techniques to purge these hidden layers is from the panel menu, the delete hidden layers option. Now, if you are not sure what are on these layers and maybe you want to keep them, you can also filter for them. So just turn on again, filtering, and then switch to attribute this time and choose not visible. So there's a lot of options here that you can choose from, but you can choose not visible or you can also choose empty. So once again, in this document, there's actually a couple of empty layers that we could get rid of just to again, simplify the whole file. And even empty layers in these large documents are going to increase the total file size. So it's definitely a good practice to purge them at the end of a workflow. Now, if I go back to seeing all the layers, you can tell that there's a lot of groups here and sometimes groups within groups. And whenever I want to quickly collapse all the groups, I would hold down Alt or Option key and click on the main structure element, which is the highest group level. So if I click on that, then it collapses all the groups inside as well. So if I open now, you can see all of these are closed. But if I wanted to open everything and see all the layers, it would be the same shortcut again, Alt or Option key on the little triangle, and then it's going to expand everything in the document. 
There is also a way to quickly find out how many layers and layer groups you have in a document. You can find this here at the bottom in the status bar. It's called the layer count. So instead of seeing the document size, which is the default setting, you can switch to this option. And it's a quite cool little statistic that you can keep an eye on there at the bottom. Now, one of the biggest concerns when you work with large documents in Photoshop, and especially when you have loads of layers, is that the file size can grow extremely big. Now, to avoid slow loading and saving times, it might be worth changing one of the preferences under the file handling category which says disable compression of PSD and PSB files. Now, if you are not familiar with PSB, that's the Photoshop large document format, which is anything that's over two gigabytes. But having this option turned on is going to increase the speed of which you need to open files probably three to four times, sometimes even more than that. However, the downside is that it's going to increase the file size as well, probably to twice as big. So it is really a difficult decision to make whether to have it on or not. But once again, if you work with massive files and you have to keep opening and saving them often, then even just temporarily, it might be worth checking that option and start using it. And last but not least, if you are using a lot of smart objects, it's also a good idea to use linked smart objects instead of embedded ones. So for example, we have Batman here on the right side, and I'm going to again use the zoom to layer group in this case, alt clicking on the group icon. So we can see there's a couple of layers inside here, but I'm going to convert this into a smart object. So this is not going to reduce the file size because the layers are still embedded into the document. But if I right click on it now and choose convert to linked, I can turn it into a linked file, which can be saved on my computer. And once I save it, the icon is going to change to a little chain. So that means it's a linked file. And just like InDesign and Illustrator, if that link file disappears or renamed, then we will have a missing link. So the link will be broken. So that's something you want to avoid. So it's great to have linked smart objects because they will reduce the size of the document and also it's going to load faster. But if you want to avoid having missing links, you also want to finish off at the end packaging up your Photoshop document. So this is under the file menu, package, and just like in InDesign, it's going to save the PSD file and create a separate folder next to it with all the linked assets. So here's the PSD and next to it, there's the links folder. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video, but please leave a comment if you know of any other useful ways of working with large documents in Photoshop. And also I'm curious to know which one is your favorite computer game character on this amazing artwork by Patrick Brown. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.